Yeah, well, I guess the, the Stories for Change project um, came out of, I suppose, some of the research I was doing with my PhD, which was looking really at um, the role of storytelling in communicating um, communicating grassroots uh, youth environmental um, action or projects effectively. Uh, and some of those influences were, um, there was a great book by Paul Hawken called Blessed Unrest and others were, were looking at, I guess, how do you visualise social change? How do you um, elevate the stories of, of all these sort of unseen, you know, volunteer run, very grassroots, non-funded, non, -funded, non um, you know, some of these groups might not even have a website or a name for their project, but they're just being active in their own communities. Um, so how do you support um, them to tell the stories of what they're doing so uh, that others outside of their community can, can learn? Well, yeah, like I said, some of the inspiration was from my PhD work, which was that was looking at um, photo voice, so using cameras, photography to to physically, you know, take pictures of uh, environmental action and and to share um, share these images and stories cross culturally. So that that action research was based in Australia, Bangladesh, and China. Um, so that some of that inspiration is really, I, I guess in that sense, how do you connect people outside of their cultural context um, and also their environmental context? So speaking, I'm speaking to you from here, from Australia, from near Melbourne, and Australia is a very, quite an affluent country um, and also per capita, very high, it's, I think number two or three, per capita carbon emissions, and also waste, all of that which goes with an affluent developed country. So I was interested in, you know, working with young people in, in this country that ha have a lot of, um, yeah, I guess high environmental impact. Um, how could some of what young people are doing here around um, environmental work, how could they be learning from say youth in Bangladesh, which on the other side, um, you know, is, is a very climate vulnerable country, but also has very low impact uh, carbon emissions. I guess I would probably call it, it's, it's action research. I would call it participatory action research, though it's probably not as formally done um, as, you know, I, I, I did in my, my PhD because it doesn't necessarily have a specific, um, uh, you know, academic frame, framework, but that's probably the, the, the closest. Uh, the main one has actually been, been people, retention of people being involved in the project because when you've got a, a participatory project like this, that, you know, um, it relies on, there's not a, there's no one being paid for this project. So it really relies that the transactional involvement is people's dedication, passion for the project. I think one of the key ones is, is, is reflecting from what I said before is really the importance in online with online organising to really look at the relationships and and to make sure that you're really aligning the people that are being involved that there that there's a real alignment between their interests and the 